So we're working with butterfly bush, which is currently an invasive species banned by the Oregon Department of Agriculture. There has recently been an exemption to the ban so that uh, cultivars bred for low fertility that exhibit 2% or less of original invasive fertility are allowed for sale. I'm Kara Still and I'm going for a master's in horticulture with an emphasis on plant breeding and genetics. Unfortunately, there isn't really a quantifiable threshold for that. Like they haven't said what high fertility is. Are we comparing it to the highest fertility or are we comparing it to like a median of the invasive cultivars? But the other more concerning to me uh, part of the, the amendment was the allowance of all interspecifics. So if you can confirm that you have a cultivar that is an interspecific with some other cultivar, doesn't matter which, uh, that's been crossed with Budlia davidii, it's not regulated under the current amendment. So I'm Ryan Contreras and I'm a professor of ornamental plant breeding in the Department of Horticulture at Oregon State University. Butterfly bush has been a, a you know, before, during, and after uh, the invasive issue, it's a plant that consumers ask for by name. And as a grower, it's hard to not grow something that you'll sell out of. I think every year that I've been here since 2009, uh, nursery and greenhouse has been the number one ag sector in Oregon, likely over a billion dollars farm gate value uh, over the next year. Uh, we need to right size the regulation that makes it uh, lenient enough uh, that growers are able to produce, propagate, and sell cultivars that present little or no ecological threat. But it needs to be stringent enough that we're preventing uh, you know, the, the flow and the sale of cultivars that may present an ecological threat. And up until now, they simply haven't been evaluated. None of these have been really, truly scientifically evaluated in Oregon. So what we're doing out here is looking at the actual fertility of all the cultivars. We've got 34 cultivars, and they're a mix between the old school invasive cultivars, so our full fertility, and then much of the breeding that's been done to reduce that fertility. I think that it'll hopefully provide a clearer picture on one, what the actual fertility is like amongst the cultivars, and two, how to measure that fertility, uh, which has implications for other invasive species, such as like Japanese barberry or Norway maple, that we might want to craft better legislation for in the future as well. So this project is also just uh, really fun. As a breeder and as a, a plant enthusiast, I am a, a hardcore plant geek. And so, A, getting to see the insane level of diversity among cultivars that have been in the industry for 60, 70, 80 years or more uh, compared to the modern breeding. But it also gives me a lot of pride uh, in the breeding community. It's a modern breeding, it really is doing an amazing job at addressing the needs of homeowners, of uh, the ecology of our world, and of, uh, and of growers. This project makes me really proud to see how far we've come uh, with this crop.